Hello everyone, this is White Wolf. I haven't done a live like this in a long time. Rather you're watching this on YouTube or rather you're watching it right now. I hope everyone is doing well. So I wanted to make this message, the calm before the storm. The calm before the storm means that we're following the accentuation of energy and the collection of how energetically we're able to project and present the intensity of what we want to reinforce as a way of connection, stability, and electromagnetic kinetic source energy that you can follow through on so that you're able to generate the breadcrumb trail of excitement, signs, miracles, confirmations, and wonders along your path, but also generating the experimentation of enlightenment, becoming the scientist of enlightenment. So I wanted to make this video here and really help you guys connect into the sense of who are we, what are we here for, and how can we collectively understand what we want to be a part of in this moment. So we have to really watch what we're saying, what we're doing, what we're projecting, what we're allowing within our lives. So this gives us the ability to generate manifestations that are not necessarily metaphysical, but they are physical and they are spiritual and they're of the essence of the soul. And connecting into that electromagnetic kinetic source energy means that you're becoming more magnetic along your path. So feeling into the vibration, feeling into the demonstration of the divine orchestration of how you're able to be interwoven and interconnected with parallel timelines, but also the emotion of it, feeling into the sensations of it and changing your sensations. So old sensations, brand new sensations, triggers, warnings and also prophecies and messages that you're able to interpret, we give ourselves the ability to find out what it is that we're trying to do. What is it that we're really here for and what are we trying to connect to? We're trying to connect back into the nothingness of the spirit, the ways of the spirit and the demonstration of the spirit. So when we see the truth for what it is and the resonance that we are, we feel into divulging different information that comes to us or you're feeling led to pick a new career path or maybe something in your life changes very drastically and you don't know why it's happening nothing ever really stays the same so that's something that my team were wanting me to talk about and source and higher self and the thing is is that we are becoming the ascension of consciousness being known presently so when we are connecting to the emulation of source, there's a demonstration that is coming through, through all of us and through many different channels of energy. So let's just say you listen to my message and you hear something in the message that doesn't resonate with you. You're able to have discernment and judgment and not just base it on my truth. Then you hear somebody else's truth and it resonates with you. And then you develop the sense of connecting into the energy of source and how it's supposed to be relayed to you. Meaning you connect to source and you're hearing source. And source is very clear and distinct on how they want you to connect and how they want you to emulate your wisdom, your, your grandeur, your ability to be the signs of achievement. So who are we really? So we don't really know who we are and we don't really see the reflection of ourselves. We've only seen, like I said, the pixels and the illusions and the reflections of ourselves. So we, don't, we have a self-awareness of who we are, but we don't really know what we are because we are not a thing, we're not an object. And that's what happens when we're on the spiritual awakening is that we lose the sense of being an object. So when you lose that, and you release that out of yourself, then that's not a reinforcement of what you actually are anymore. So what's interesting is that I haven't really wanted to go live in a very long time. I think the reason being is because I've went live for about five years or so, and when you go live for five years, you kind of um, lose grip on what you're, you're doing. Um, not losing grip, but kind of focusing on other things that are more important. But then sometimes you get back into alignment and you find out what it is that you are supposed to be doing and when you need to do it and when you're led to do it instead of just doing it 
as a daily practice and as repetition and as you can connect back into your space of energy, then you're able to decipher what you're supposed to do in this present moment. The present moment is a gift and if we allow it to be a gift, then it can be the gift that keeps on giving. But if we don't allow the gift to be present, then we're not able to accept it. So one of the things that I think changes is the growing seasons of change. Nothing ever stays the same. Nothing is linear and everything is parallel and omnipresent. So omnipresent meaning that everything everywhere is happening all at once. So therefore, when you connect back into your space of energy, your space of collection, your space of emulation on how you're able to generate more mass within your spirit, meaning light within your spirit, then the spirit is able to speak through you. The spirit is able to be known. Then the spirit knows what it needs from you. And then you know what you need from it. So then we lose all sense of being meaningless or nothing or no definition or feeling like we have to contemplate all the time. So I think a lot of us, what we're experiencing is that even this morning, if you hit your, if you, like I stepped on like a stick and it went through my foot a little bit. In that moment, that seems like a real ouchie. That seems like a real problem. It seems like a real issue. But that is just the mind and the ego and the physicality not being connected with the non-physical nature. But it can be like, oh, I did step on that stick and it really, really hurt really bad. But it doesn't mean that I stay in that hurt or I stay in that sense of being in dread because I stepped on the stick and it went through my foot a little bit. Well, we can use that example in many different stages of our life. So it doesn't mean that you have to stay in the hurt or stay in the regret or stay in the past in a sense and keep manifesting the past and let go of the revolving door. So messages that you get and you divulge and you develop and whatever comes out of you is just you channeling the reinforcement of source. So you're using source as a resource. Sounds stupid, sounds silly, but it's very simple. Use source as a resource. And if it's not in flow, then it's a no-go. It's no, no, no. So if we can feel into the very fact that whatever we're manifesting or generating or shifting timelines or meditating to stimulate a different simulation, then what is that simulation and what is that non-physical essence? So sometimes when we go about the journey, we, we understand that everything is made up of these series of moments, series of moments of disassociation and association. So when you have series of moments and you can kind of look at your past moments where you manifested and you didn't realize it or you were healing and you didn't realize it or you lost your patience. But then now you see the series of moments where it's not the reminiscence of a moment, but it's just the series of moments where there's growth. I had a client that was like, oh, my friend did all this stuff. She wrote this book. She's doing retreats and stuff like that. And I said, that's not important. I said, it's important what she represented to you. It's important the example that you set to her because you were a part of her journey and her growth going into that. But it does not make her more spiritually evolved than the rest of us. It just means that she's in a position to be of service, which is beautiful and wondrous. But in this moment, me and you are having this singular moment. And that's what's precious. It's like when you receive a reading from somebody, you receive a reading from someone, and in that moment, in that moment of presence, in that moment where you're opening up and you're connecting into, uh, I'm doing a live, I'll be doing sessions later on around 10 or 11 p.m. Eastern, Self Master. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna be doing a healing uh, during this live, maybe a meditation, I don't know. But I decided to go live because I haven't gone live in months uh, because I haven't felt led to. So the reason for this live is because the calm before the storm is 
within the storm because we went through a couple hurricanes. We went through Helene and Milton. And going through Milton, we had power. We only had, you know, limbs in the backyard. There wasn't a lot of debris. Our neighborhood was fine. And it's because in those moments, I know that I was connected to the divine because we put up protection for the first storm, which transcended into the second storm. And I remember the other storm I went through in Pensacola was way worse. And we set up protocols because we had to have faith that we were going to be protected. And I heard from spirit that you're going to be fine. You're not going to have to evacuate. So when you look at the snapshots of your destiny, the snapshots of your evolution, the series of moments that you have within your life, then you kind of see like, okay, I am being divinely led. Sometimes it's not glamorous. Sometimes it's not easy. And sometimes it may frustrate you and that's okay. But what it means is that you're not living in turmoil. You know, if you're truly blessed and you're truly going along the journey, God will protect you. If you really accept that protection, does that make sense? So when you accept that protection within your heart, within your spirit, then you'll be divinely guided. And I think that's what's pure about that is that you'll be divinely guided wherever you go within your walk within the spirit. This means that you'll be led by the spirit. It means that you will follow spirit. You'll walk over the hot coals, you know, um, I'm drinking Noah's. <laughs> what do you think I was drinking? But the point is, is that, um, the point is, is that, uh, no matter what's going on in your life, there's something that is divinely orchestrated, that is divinely intuitively guided. So everything is a reflection. Everything is showing you something. Rather it's movies, rather you're going, having drinks with a friend and you sing karaoke and you happen to get upon this business deal for no reason you wanted to invest in something and you're looking to invest in something and then you go out with your friend, you have drinks, you have fun, but then you meet your business partner, your future business partner, and you guys open up a business and it helps you build a corporation. So we don't have to be spiritual bigots. We don't have to be spiritual, religious people. Sometimes God will be in the most mysterious of places, in the darkest of places. It's kind of like Jesus with the tax man. He wronged a lot of people in his own town. He, he was very bad to people. He stole a lot of money from people. But Jesus chose, like, I want you to sit at my table. Why did he do that? Well, when you're awakening, you kind of look at other people and you're like, I want you to sit at my table. I want to have dinner with you. I want you to sit at my table because I see maybe something in yourself that you don't see. And it doesn't mean that they haven't transcended a lot. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that we're, we're, we're a lot of the Milky Way prophets. A lot of us are star seeds. A lot of us are angels from different past lifetimes, rather they were good or bad. So it was interesting um, because I watch a lot of movies and for some reason I'm going to talk about this. There's an actor named Gabriel Breen. I watched this movie Stigmata and it was about this like priest who um, was taking possession of this woman and wasn't letting her go and there was secrets of the Vatican, right? So there was, you know, scenes where th she was like floating, there were scenes where she was like dehydrated, where she was smelling flowers, because going through stigmata, a lot of the saints went through like biblical trials with tears of blood, you know, going through, um, you know, ringing in their ears and many different biblical trials, if you will. Well, I had a vision with him while I was reading his memoir because I watched the movie and I went to the library with my partner, Morningstar, and 
then I see his face at the library after I watch that movie. So I see him staring at me, and I don't know, if I didn't walk a certain way in the library, I would have never seen the book. So this is how we know that we're spiritually connected to synchronicity, serendipity, right? So, and I remember, I'm only going to divulge a uh, portion of the vision, but there was like the school, it was winter time, there wasn't a lot of grass, there wasn't a lot of leaves, but I remember he took me through this like school and it had like, you know, a uh, checkerboard brick layer on the, on the ground and the, the walls were white like this and the doors had like uh, no handles on them and stuff like that, but there was open doors and there were doors of, of good and evil, heaven and hell, um, good or bad. Just know that that is there for a reason and it has been there for the dawning of mankind. It just has been there. But a lot of us, we're opening doors and gateways and portals and going a certain way. Finding our own way does not mean that it's just a meditative path. Finding our own way, we do, we do go through different trials and tribulations and also uh, things that we go through. And I think a lot of us, the spiritual awakening is kind of like stigmata in a way. Um, I don't think uh, stigmata has, it has a stigma. It has a stigma for being negative, but I think ascension symptoms that we all have, uh, like having a hurt back. I've had a hurt back. I've gone through a depression during the awakening. I've had moments where I meditated for two or three hours, uh, you know, having energetic downloads, getting so much information and visions and, uh, you know, seeing all different kinds of guides and stuff like that. So. I think all of us, rather we know it or not, rather we understand it or not, are going through a prophecy that is a lot like the saints, a lot like Jesus, and a lot like um, what happened in Lumeria. So understanding is that we all have a sense of worship. When we're meditating, we're worshiping. We're worshiping consciousness. We're worshiping the universe. We're, we're not doing it in the same way as just praying and repenting for sins, which I don't believe in sin, and I don't think it's a bad thing to repent. But we are grounding back into Mother Earth. We're giving back to the planet. We're giving and receiving and sharing and speaking into existence of whatever it is that we want to divulge and give to the planet. You know, there's people in this world who throw a football and make billions of dollars, you know? There's nothing wrong with that, but that's what, they're, that's what they were destined for. That's the spirit and the essence of who they were supposed to be. So, what are you? I don't know myself. I've been just doing this for five years, but maybe I could be doing something else and it could manifest another thing. I don't know. I don't know the, all the answers. But everybody is spiritually inclined. Everybody is psychic. Everybody is God. So, the teacher within ourselves is the greatest teacher because it forces us to change and it forces us to go ahead and move on. Move on with life, move on with who we are, and move on with the relaxation of giving back and coming back into existence of who we're supposed to be. But if this is the message that helps you connect in some type of way, there will be people that are against you. There will be naysayers. There will be false idols. There will be people that don't understand you for you. That's perfectly fine. I'm a perfect example of that because I've had it I'm obviously wearing like a, a sweatshirt that's very rebellious. But the thing is, is that rebellion does not always mean negative. It's not just because um, you're being rebellious to uh, be an anarchist or anything like that or stick it to the man. It means you're being rebellious because you don't want to conform to the way that the world wants you to be. 
You're not conforming to that, you know. You're not beholding yourself to that. Um, and I think a lot of us are just, and we can kind of look back in our, our old life and see how we were treated early on. And we saw how it helped us. You know, a lot of you have come from abusive homes, broken homes. A lot of you come from sexual abuse. Some of you come from domestic violence. Um, some of you come from military background. You had to go to war and you were awakened and then you had to face your PTSD. Um, so, uh, but approve yourself, appoint yourself and, and just know that the divine will approve you. I mean, it doesn't matter who you were in your previous life. And yes, we make mistakes and, you know, some of the greatest people in the world, uh, some of the most successful people, you know, people who are who are presidents and things of that nature, because I just watched the movie last night on Ronald Reagan. It's really, really good. But everybody has a part to play in this uh, role. Um, everybody plays a role in this puzzle piece that is the spiritual awakening. Yeah, that one's uh, pretty spiritual too. So, I think the question, and I'll, I'll kind of go into like a meditation or a healing uh, and get done with this. I think the question is, how can we stop being spiritual bigots? How can we stop being spiritual like green freaks? Because uh, I had someone comment on my thing, which she said that uh, I was contributing to animals dying. I, I like to eat meat. I'm not going to stop eating meat. Um, spiritual re religious natures, spiritual bigotry, and spiritual judgment. The accuser of the brethren and the sisters of the awakening. I know I'm using terminology that's not necessarily ascension terminology, but that's kind of the point. Um, because I see a lot of people who are gifted. I see a lot of people who have great anointings and stuff like that. Um, the thing is, is that we should not tear each other down. We should not tear each other down. We should lift each other up. And if we are responding, we should just respond out of wisdom and love. If you do respond. Um, and this does not mean that you respond in a, necessarily in a post or on a comment, which, you know, I, I have, but I do in a way of teaching. So... Send people love, but also you don't have to conform to other people. Like if there's people that you don't want to be around, you don't have to interact with them if you don't want to. You can just even, you can even tell somebody, you know, in your family, I don't, I don't, I don't want to interact with you because you don't respect me the way that I want to be respected. So, you should only be around the things that bring you a sense of belonging, make you feel like you belong, make you feel like you are the person that you're supposed to be, and make you feel like whatever is in your life, that it's supposed to be there, and it doesn't feel misguided or misplaced, kind of like your furniture. When you know that your furniture is moved like two inches to the left, you know that something's off in the way that you stare at your TV. It doesn't feel the same. It doesn't hit the same, right? It doesn't have the same potency. It's kind of like a hearing, like a, like, for example, I was listening to a song, Have a Little Faith in Me by John Hyatt. There was a certain version I clicked on first and it just didn't, I'm like, that's not the version that I like. You know, it, it didn't compete with me. And then I listened to the other version, which was the original version, and that's the one that hits on a certain note. That's the one that's perfect. I didn't want that other version. It was like a live version, live rendition or something like that. I wanted the other version, where it was just the piano, just the vocals. So, it's kind of like that. Um, like, uh, 
like Sunshine on My Shoulders by uh, John Denver. There's a version of that song where it has the strings in it. I like the one with just the acoustic and the vocals. It's the same thing. You either want unity or you want chaos. Even if you're in chaos, sometimes that chaos can bring you back to unity and balance and love. So it kind of snap you back in, shock you back in, uh, if you wanted to, I guess. But the point of what I was saying, and I'm going to be doing some energetic work here, um, just love, don't judge, don't project hate, just allow people to be a teacher and allow yourself to be a teacher. So, okay, so we're going to be doing some healing energy today. I don't feel like doing a meditation, but we're going to do some healing energy. Um, new private session special is 30 minutes for $60 and around 10 or 11 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to be doing readings, healings, activations on the live. So I hope um, that you connect with that later around 10 or 11 p.m. Eastern. And I have a video where you can contact me. I have my phone number, email, and all that jazz. So. So, Archangels of Love and Light, who's willing to cleanse us of our auric field, tapping into God's source energy and the great I am, diving deep into Middle Mother Gaia Earth, grounding and ascending connection into one, into the essence, into infinity and beyond, collecting the absolute nature. And feeling into 50 timeline shifts, portals and gateways of ascension to help you connect with the Anunnaki. Archangel Michael is giving us the sword of the spirit, the shield of power, the breastplate of righteousness and hell of salvation, and the belt of truth, the armor of God, the billion light protection grid. Electromagnetic kinetic source energy to be more magnetic. So light linguistics and connecting into clients being dragged into reset karmic imbalances. Pink dusky energy from our feet all the way to the top of the head. We're going to be connecting into the Sophia codes and Mary Magdalene has some encryption helping us connect into our divine feminine. And Jesus is coming in with water to replenish ourselves, to help us with our electrolytes and to give us inner child healing as we drink the water. So we have the rhinoceros coming through very strongly. The, rhino the rhinoceros is the symbolism of strength, being content, being open, and wanting to reinforce your channel and become wisdom with love, grandeur, and majesty. The spirit animal of the squirrel is gonna help us resolve problems within our own life. The Golden Christ Dragon is going to help us with any ailments, any sicknesses, 
any damages to the heart, rather it was emotional, spiritual, physical. Tap into your metaphysical shape-shifting abilities. Become the shape-shifter of your creation. Take the shape and the hold of whatever you want to reinforce. Rather it's money, rather it's friends, relationships, connections, grace. It doesn't matter what it is. Kundalini energy. It's coming through very strongly. Helping ourselves generate optical illusions. More divine orchestration, divine protection, psychic protection. Archangels of love and light, whose wound the cleanses of our auric field, tapping into God's source energy and the great I am, diving deep in the middle mother water, mother Gaia, earth, grounding, ascending. Earth, water, wind, and rain. the elementals, and connecting into the raven spirit. The raven is a symbolism of resiliency, power, love, and wisdom. The Black Panther energy is helping us develop an ayahuasca ceremony. Receive a heart activation, third eye activation, Everybody take one last deep breath. And so it is. So that was the live for today. I haven't felt led to go live in a few months, so that's what I did. So thank you guys so much for connecting with me this morning or evening, wherever you're at. Also around 10 or 11 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to be going live doing reading ceilings activations. So I hope to see you guys there. And also all the donations are $20 donation base readings. Um, and also new private session specials, 30 minutes for $60. So if you want to connect with me, uh, then feel free to do so. But thank you. God bless and namaste. I hope to see you guys around 10 or 11 p.m. Eastern. If you want me to invite you to live, I will. But other than that, be awesome. Stay safe.